first off, I apologize for kind of being absent. I am doing a lot more work at, at work, at actual work. And so I haven't really had to- as much time to really do any of this stuff. I do still kind of stay involved with the development of things, but I, I just don't have time to test and fly as much as I used to or make these videos. I really wish I could make more videos. So I apologize for that. I am actually going to slow down even more as my work ramps up. Um, I'm coming down from my recovery of my accident um, it's like almost two years ago now, and I, I'm still really not even close to 100%, but I am able to work a little bit more. I have a little bit less pain, so I'm just going to be slowing down a little bit more because you know life prevails over this stuff. In addition to that, this frame design that you're seeing here is the Flowrite frame design, which I've been working hard, really hard on for the past really year by now. And it was supposed to come out like two months ago, but I've really dropped the ball on that as well because I just don't have as much time to do this stuff. So I kind of had a couple other people help me manage various things and kind of fell through. And then when we finally made the, the final order for the production shipment, uh, I don't know who screwed it up. I probably screwed it up when I sent the files, but the wrong files were cut. The previous version were cut. And so we got a whole bunch of parts that don't line up and we have a whole shipment of frames that just don't line up and I don't even know what to do with them. And so I placed an emergency order for new parts, just a couple of the parts that are screwed up. And then I forgot to include one other part. So that shipment is actually was shipped out on Wednesday. It's probably going to be delivered on Monday or Tuesday. And the second order is also being cut right now. And it's probably going to ship out on Monday. So some, sometime in the next two weeks or so, this frame is going to come out. The price target is $39.99. It might end up being $44.99 because of the cost of the frame. I did make a couple of last minute adjustments to kind of give everybody what they want. It added about five, five grams to the frame overall. So now the frame is around 90 grams, which I think is a really good weight. I think for acro quads, 95 grams is really the upper limit that I would, I would pref- I prefer to fly. So I really don't, I don't like flying frames that are more than 95 grams because it's just, it's just too much weight to add on to everything. This video is really just going to be me discussing all the stuff that I think about at work. I'm always thinking about this stuff and so I've come to a couple of revelations the past couple of days which I think are really interesting it really just pulls together all the ideas that I've had about quads over the past two years and just going to kind of pull it all together for you and discuss all the motors and props and various things and uh, I'm going to start off with quad weight so quad weight was one of the very first things that I started testing like two years ago long long time ago people were saying that uh, heavier quads fly faster and uh, I had already tested a whole bunch of stuff about heavy and light, and I came to the conclusion that these things fly, so lighter is probably better, and then I tested that, and sure enough, I found that I preferred lighter quads. This is way back when I started, when I couldn't even fly properly, so to me, lighter quads are better, but let's really look at why a lot of people prefer heavy quads. I know that Ladrib flies like a 730 gram 4S quad. I mean, that thing is so darn heavy that if he hits something, it's just gonna crumble, and it's just, it's so heavy. I, I can't believe that that's what he prefers to fly, but you know, his preferences are his preferences. But let's think about why that actually might be. He might not be, well, there's no right or wrong here. It's his preference, but his preference might be saying more than I may have led on to believe. So let's look at light quads. Light quads have, the, the props don't need to work as hard to like hover or keep a light quad in the air. So in general, lighter is going to be quieter because your props are spinning slower. So if you want a quiet quad, you want to have the lightest possible quad with the largest possible props. And that's going to be silent. And, you know, phantoms kind of make a lot of noise, the DJI phantom. But if you go to a, a like a home built quad that has like 10 inch props, that's going to sound really quiet compared to a phantom because number one, the props that you're going to use are probably going to have a little bit better vortex control and it's not going to be so zippy through the air at the end of the props because the phantom props is basically a bullnose square tip. Number two, the quad you build is probably going to have a better disc loading property than a phantom. And a phantom doesn't care because it's got so many gizmos on board that it doesn't care at all what the props are and it just flies no matter what. So let's get back to this discussion and say that lighter quads generally are quieter. And they're quieter because the props are spinning slower. That's a very important concept. And that's the concept that I realized when I was at work and I was thinking, I really prefer, I almost prefer the HQ 5x5x3 over the recent doll 5x4x3, the new 5040C, the new Cyclone 5040C, which I think is a fantastic acrobatic prop and it's super efficient. But I realized that this, this prop has lower low speed control. It has less control at low speeds and it has less control at low speeds because the props are physically spinning slower. So a while back, well over a year ago now I think, 
air mode and idle up was a thing. Like before any air mode or anything like that, Steel was using idle up. I mean, Steel is really, uh, people don't give him enough credit. He's really, he has so much knowledge. He doesn't share this knowledge for various reasons, but he has so much knowledge in this industry that nobody realizes. And way back when, he kind of was the first person that discussed idle up and me and a friend uh, met him way early on at an event and he kind of set up a, a one of our from one of my friend's quad and he put the idle up switch on it and did all the stuff that he normally does and i think he still has that quad the alien to this day and he still thinks it flies amazing and his setup was fantastic so something about steel's pids really are magical and what he does it really is magical but now let's think about what idle up and air mode are actually doing the point of air mode is to keep the quad in control. Now, how does it do that? It does that by increasing the RPM of the blades when you're at minimum throttle or just when you drop the throttle. What idle up does is it always keeps the props spinning at a relatively higher RPM than they would be if you just armed. And the goal of idle up is the same as air mode, which is just to keep the quad in control at lower RPMs when you have the throttle low. So some people say that air mode is better or idle up is better. It's it's really debatable. It probably makes it, it makes a difference what quad you're actually flying and what props you have in various other aspects. But air mode attempts to be more efficient than idle up in the sense that it it tries to maintain the lowest RPM necessary to keep the quad in control. So you still might feel like it has a little bit of a wobble. And I kind of wish there was kind of like an air mode plus where you could tell it you know spin five percent faster than you normally would and i think that would actually be the most efficient between idle up and air mode but the concept of keeping the props spinning to maintain control is very important here because i prefer lower weight quads so that means that my props are generally spinning slower and if you look at my quads, look at look at the angle of my GoPro. My, I fly with a 40 degree GoPro tilt, uh, 40 or 45, I don't even know, 40 or 45 degrees. That's a pretty steep GoPro tilt for acrobatics. And so I've got to do a lot of, of uh, yaw cross coordination to maintain, you know, smooth rolls and flips. It, it's actually much more difficult to fly with a f near 45 degree GoPro angle. It's easier to fly when you're up at 60 degrees or 65 degrees like Maddie Stunts. So that's because my quads are a little bit lighter these are these quads are around 580 grams all up weight now this one is the um is the five inch and it's uh, 340 grams exactly as seen here with everything it's only missing the gopro and the battery and then this one is a, is a six inch with 5.5 inch props and it is 345 grams only missing the gopro and the battery and so the all-up weight of these quads is around 580 grams, usually under 580 grams. With, with this quad, I prefer running lighter 1,300 packs, and that's going to give me around a 565 to 570 gram all-up weight. And this one, I run 15, 1,600 grams. It's a 15, 1,600 milliamp batteries because it's a longer range, I kind of like to call it, because it's 5.5 inches. So it's a little bit heavier. It's closer to 600 grams. But in general, this is 5.5 inches, so it can handle more weight. And these are two pretty light quads for acrobatics. And so I have steeper camera tilt because I need it, because I have to go faster to maintain good control. And when I'm going slow, I don't have great control because my props are not spinning fast enough for me to maintain that control. So now the debate of whether a heavier quad is slower or faster, that's, that's a different story. That's a totally different discussion. But the debate of which is better for acrobatics, well, you just have to manage your motor and prop combination. And my preference is a faster motor, 2600 kV motor, with a lower pitch prop. And the goal here is to put that on a lighter setup, 580 grams is my preferred weight, so that I have a higher general RPM on the lower pitch prop. Now if you're running a heavier quad, a 700 gram quad, you know, 600 something gram quad, then you can tolerate steeper pitch props a little bit better because you weigh more. So it's gonna take more RPM for the props to keep you up in the air. So heavier quads have faster spinning blades because they have to, they don't have a choice. They have to spin faster in order for the quad to stay up and do what it does. So in essence, some people may prefer their heavier quad 
because the blades are generally spinning faster and they have more gyroscopic effect. Now, none of this is based on science. I have not done any research or science. This is in purely coming from me, from my intuition, from my experience flying these things. There's, there's nothing here. I might be completely wrong. And I also believe that weight has a lot to do with the gyroscopic effect as well. If you have a heavier quad, I think it needs a little bit more, uh, a little bit more gyroscopic effect in order to maintain control. And, uh, but I don't think it's linear. I think that um, you always need some minimum amount of gyroscopic effect. But and then as you gain weight, you don't. It doesn't become like gain 20 grams and you need to spin like an extra 5% RPM faster. It's it's not a linear relationship. In essence, I'm trying to say that a heavier quad may need a lot more gyroscopic effect in order to maintain control, or it may need a lot, le lot less than I believe. Hard to say, but I can say that a heavier quad with more aggressive props like the 5x5x3x8 by 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 HQ, which I personally think is one of the best props HQ has made, not one of the best prop HQ has made to date. I think these two props, the 5.5x4x3 and the 5x5x3 five by five by are the two best props HQ has made so far. They will ha The heavier quad will feel like it's more in control with these steeper pitch props. Now, it is heavier, so it's going to require a lot more power to move. When you punch it, it's going to draw a hell of a lot more amps, and it's just generally going to be less efficient. And you definitely still have the weight to lug around and, you know, throw around in your moves. So, so I'm not even going to discuss the concept of, you know, heavier quads to throw farther because that's just not true, but it's, a, it's another debatable topic. So now let's look at motor size and prop selection overall. So motor size is another huge debate because we have so many darn massive motors coming out that nobody really knows what to do with any of them. So I've tested a whole lot of sizes and I've tested it across a lot of different frames as well. And something I discussed in a video recently was uh, disc unloading, which the props need air. They need room to unload the thrust coming off the prop disc. And if you have anything blocking the thrust disc coming off the prop, the thrust coming off the prop, it's going to make the motor and the quad feel like it's more of an static environment, and it's gonna to need to work harder in order to spin that prop. Now, you can see that my frames are very much like an alien, where they have kind of air space in the middle. And like I've said before, this is the first time I heard this kind of concept was from Steel, where he noticed that when you cover these holes around the sides, you have reduced control, significantly reduced control, not even a little bit. So, you know, please don't take this out of context. I'm not dissing a whole bunch of frames out there that do this, but my experience and my testing has led me to feel that having your battery and your GoPro on the same, in, the, in between the blades is not a good thing because the lateral thrust coming off the prop disc is bumping directly into those. Now, if you have a larger frame where the props clear that space in the middle entirely, that may not be as big, big of an effect because now you've cleared the center and the, and the props have room to unload. And the reason why my frame, the back of it is chopped off is, is twofold. Number one, because we don't need that extra weight. Nobody uses this stuff back here. Our components are smaller than they used to be. So we don't need this room back here anymore. And number two, you have less frame for the motors to, for the prop thrust to bump into. So it generally should perform better in the back. And the back always needs a little bit more assistance than the front because the front uh, gets cleaner air than the back always, regardless of how you know wide or spaced out your frame is. The front blades are always drawing, always having more fresh air than the rear props. So yeah, that concept. So let's return to motor size. Motor size actually is important. I personally think that after testing so many darn motors, the 22 with motor size, also I should note that I'm only really discussing kind of not high quality motors, but at least, you know, baseline quality motors, not racer star motors or just super duper low end motors. Those they really don't, you can't test that stuff because it's so variable that you can't, you can't put a finger on anything. The higher end motors, not even higher end, just again, baseline motors that are reasonable all have relatively similar construction quality so construction quality and similar performance in the air you know from one motor to another a 2207 to another 2207 that are both relatively well constructed you're not really going to feel a whole lot of difference in the air of course there's construction differences between the two but really you just select your best brand your favorite brand and it's pretty much going to be similar and there's motors that i prefer over others but they're not necessarily due to performance, although that is definitely a factor. So the 22 stator width, I personally think is really good for five inch when you have a frame that's airy and open and allows you to, allows the prop to breathe properly. 
when you have a frame that is more constricted with the battery and the, bat and the GoPro directly in the center, directly between the blades, that static environment makes it much more difficult for the motor to spin the blades. So going with a wider motor, which does give you more torque at low RPM, is a better idea. So the difference between 2207 and 2306, I prefer 2207 pretty much across the board because I, I don't prefer running inefficient frame setups or just setups in general so that I need the wider stator. But the, the 22 size and the 07 height <clears throat> is particularly nice because you get good amount of torque down low and then once you get higher up in the RPM, the stator height takes over and you have better, it's just better. It, it just has better management at higher RPM. The 23 or just wider motors only really have torque up to like 50%. Like once you get up in the in the in the RPM range, the prop is already spinning fast. It's got a lot of inertia, and you need the stator height to manage the switching speed, the uh, transition speeds of, of the blades at higher RPMs. So what are 23 stators good for? It's for setups that are less efficient with kind of tighter setups and have battery and GoPro and everything tightly packed in the middle or if you want to run a chunkier prop. Having a super chunky prop on the quad, you want a motor that has more torque lower in the RPM range because you don't need to spin that prop as fast to get going or move as fast as you want. So yeah, that's really the you know summary of wider versus taller stators. The recent 2405 stator width, I'm not a big fan of the 2405. I just, I really don't, I prefer the, I prefer higher RPMs in general, like overall, I will take RPM over torque because I prefer the gyroscopic feel of being in control. So I prefer the 2207 height or 23, I just prefer more height. I prefer height. Now you don't see a lot of 08 height motors because getting the 08 height actually costs a lot more. Now the way they make stators is they kind of like layer everything together and then they stamp the stator out. So getting that extra millimeter of height costs a lot more and it's actually a luxury to have an 08 height motor in a race spec style motor. There's a bunch of motors that are way taller, but a race spec stator that is, has like a small stator is, uh, is gonna be more expensive than an 08 height, although I would prefer an 08 height. I really wanna see a 2208 motor or 2308 motor. I think, oh, actually we have a 2308. Uh, uh, Race Flight has a 2308 motor, which is probably fantastic. It, it's, it's the right KV, it's the right size. It's overall, you know, the right spec that I think a motor should have for anything. And it it's, should be really good for six inch and really chunky props because it's got the good KV, it's got the big, big stator, all that sort. So wider, <clears throat> wider stators are good for larger props that are harder to spin, and uh, taller stators are good for lower pitch props that spin faster. So now you look at my quads and my setups, and it makes a lot of sense that I prefer lower pitch blades that spin faster than steep pitch blades that spin slower. So I, I prefer lower pitch blades and higher KV motors that will give me more gyroscopic effect and make me feel like I'm in more control. And that's all we want, we want more control. And then I have efficient frame setups that allow the props to hopefully unload better. I mean, I'm just kind of guessing based on my testing, I don't really know, I don't have any you know, studies to show for it, but just on my flight feel and my performance testing. And so it makes a lot of sense. And so these things do fly. And the reason I prefer the lighter quads is because I can throw the weight around easier and uh, I'm not even gonna discuss which one throws farther because I have videos on that too and it's very debatable. But the lighter quads with higher KV motors that are lighter and weigh less and lower pitch props that can spin faster to get you going is what I prefer. It has better control, I think it's good for acrobatics. I think, I think it will fly, they feel, I think the setups that I am telling you or I'm discussing constantly will feel significantly different compared to your general 630 gram acro setup. But it's your preference entirely. This is just my preference. Um, I, I, I literally could talk for hours. I actually recorded this video three times um, and I had to cut out several, several minutes of uh, this video. Um, so that's all for now. The podcast that I am recording or I'm trying to do is gonna come out probably later today or maybe tomorrow. Um, the first episode wasn't the best because just recording it. You'll see. I'll discuss it later on. Don't forget the floss and bye-bye.